Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel and today we are checking out two more episodes of Star Trek Deep Space Nine episode 23 Family Business and then episode 24 Shakar and I'm really excited about episode 24 Shakar no one has said anything about this episode to me it's just the thumbnail is Kira looking really concerned and I've been really intrigued by why she is looking so concerned for a long time now ever since I saw that thumbnail a few things to add before we get into this reaction one this is going to be the very last react not the the very last reaction of all time don't get me wrong <laughs> i'm still doing three videos a week for sure but this afternoon i am going to be getting invisalign so if for a month or two after this reaction my videos are a little bit different it's because my mouth is going to be in a lot of pain because people are going to be sanding my teeth and stuff like that so yeah next ds9 reaction which is the finale of all things like i just had to coincide with the finale of ds9 which is next week which means there's also going to be a live stream next week if you're watching this on youtube but yeah I just may be talking funny in the next few weeks of reactions just as my mouth adjusts to this Invisalign. And yeah, that being said, we are very, very close to the finale. This is the very last video, the penultimate video before we get into the season three finale. And I am so excited. I think things maybe will ramp up a little bit in these two episodes, or maybe it'll be two very calm episodes before two maybe a little bit more serious and chaotic episodes with the finale. And yeah, again, next week, there will be a live stream on YouTube after the season three finale to go over season three, what I liked about it, what I didn't like, which is I didn't actually not like anything about this season. I think most of everything was amazing. But yeah, feel free to join me and a bunch of other people as well as we discuss season three on live stream next week after the premiere. And if you'd like to check out more of my reactions, head to my Patreon of uncut and early access reactions to my movies and TV shows that come out up to three weeks early, as well as exclusive Patreon merch, live streams, movie polls, movie reactions, and so much more. Thank you so much for checking out. Let's get back to the video. Okay, let's dive on into this thing. I hope you enjoy my reaction to the first episode we're going to be watching today. Episode Episode 23 of Season 3 of Star Trek Deep Space Nine, Family Business. Looks like Cisco's chefing up a salad here. Oh, that actually looks so good, you know? Oh, and he still has the goatee. Okay, maybe he's actually going to keep it. You're cooking chicken paprikash. Paprikash. You only cook Hungarian food when you're... Paprikash. Cassidy Yates. Who? The freighter Who's captain that? I told you about. Oh, no way. I could uh, invite her over for dinner. How about tomorrow night? Wait, I'm so glad that we're still going through with this. You're gonna like your dad. You never know. I'm actually so glad. We had this conversation in Explorers, right? And I thought maybe it was just gonna be a plot that Jake brings up and then it gets dropped. But I'm so glad that this woman is coming into Cisco's life. And also, Morn is right here. He's a disgrace to this family, to Ferengi everywhere. No, he's not. A whole generation of Ferengi will be courting the Prime Directive and abandoning the pursuit of Latin. Oh, that would be pretty awesome, actually. Oh. Relax, brother. Nog isn't gonna destroy the Ferengi. Look at Morn life. talking up a woman over here. <laughs> Who is this elegant Ferengi? The Ferengi Commerce Authority. Uh, what's that? The bar is closed! Everybody else! Are they being shut down? Star Trek Deep Space Nine. This seems like it could be a very interesting episode. A few different family dynamics at play here. Are these all your assets? Yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Lines. I would never dream of trying to hide anything from the FCA. Uh, can I look over those figures again? Yes. <laughs> oh, you're forgetting this whole warehouse of stuff. Fine franchise. But you told me to... <gasps> Go get them. <laughs> but you haven't even told me what I'm being charged with. No, I haven't. Okay. With violating Ferengi trade bylaws, subsection 1027, paragraph 3. What has he violated? Paragraph 3. Improper supervision of a family member? Oh, because Starfleet. For the criminal activities of one Ishka, daughter of Adred, wife oh. of Kelder. Never mind. She's charged with earning profit. Oh, no. Our Moogie? Not Ishka, man. Not earning profit. Oh, she earned like a cent. She was given a cent out of someone, like a, the kindness of someone's heart. <laughs> sure, my thieving brother doesn't touch anything. Going somewhere? Back to the home world to take care of some business. Wait, I'm actually excited to see his mom though. Although I hope she's not naked. 
Because all the women are supposed to be naked, right? Latin them to make restitution for her crimes. I will wring that confession out of her if I have to. Oh my god. Is your mother you're talking about? Don't remind me. I guess family isn't super huge in Ferengi culture, I feel, right? Have you met her yet? How does everyone know? Jake introduced us. So are you gonna ask her out for dinner? Oh, <laughs> what did I tell you about contradicting me? You uh, told me not to do it. That's right. So you're going to stay here and watch over the bar while I'm... No, let him go with you. And you know why? Because you'll just take her side. Interesting. Stop calling her by that infantile nickname. But she likes it. Well, I don't. So, oh, that's the nickname for her. Moogie. Come, if you want. Just remember one thing. This is between Moogie... Oh, say it, come on. Is this the Ferengi homeworld? This is a lot darker than I thought. Deposit your admission fee in the box by the door. <laughs> Remember. No way they have to pay to use the towels. Years. If I had my way, I would have been gone another 20. Mm. Mother certainly has been acquiring quite a few new things. What a nice little house. Your mother will be placed in indentured servitude and you will be required to make restitution for her crimes. Do you oh understand everything God. I've said? What should be like one dollar though? Not that it matters. Oh. I'm not confessing anything. Oh, hello. Me? No, 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 not at all. Of course I was. This is my home and I'll speak to whomever I want. Oh, I love this guy. Or this guy, this girl. I'm sure there's an explanation. You have three days to get your house in order. It's so funny how it's like just shocking it is. And pretend none of this has ever happened. You mean we're leaving so soon? Rob, this is your home. You can stay as long as you- Oh, she loves Rob so much. Seems like Quark's family is a very progressive family. Constable, there's no telling how long Quark will be away. All we want is our dartboard. Well, can't you just replicate another one? <laughs> they want to play darts together. I was gonna run off. The least he could do is give us some warning so we could retrieve our property. It's the principle of the thing. Oh. <laughs> oh, Bashir. Personal property inside the bar. Huh. Let me guess. Your lucky dartboard. <laughs> he knows. Oh, well, I, I thought... I thought what? I thought you were going to... Be meeting the woman. You know, uh, Jake's friend. How do you two know about her? The chief told me. <laughs> Throw him under the bus. Exactly how many people has Jake told about this woman? Everyone. <laughs> Wait, guys, I actually really like this episode. I really hope she lives up to her expectations now. You know, Mookie, she never liked chewing our food for us. Not even when we were children. Oh, she always had her own way of doing Yeah, very progressive family. Slumped in this chair, he'd say to me, Quark, I don't know what I'm going to do about that female. No wonder he never earned much profit. It was wow, okay, so Quark's like the dad, and Rom's like the mom. She took a part of the monthly stipend I sent her and invested it in a Hupirian beetle farm. Oh, good idea. The best. Really? How much did you make, Moogie? Three bars of gold-pressed latinum. Oh! A hundred thousand bars. Females are not allowed to earn profit. Yeah, but it's like three bars. Not if I have anything to say about it. Gee, I wish father were alive. Then it'd be just like old time. <laughs> Eating two grubs, discussing important issues of the day. Arguing. Mother. I know. And who said Star Trek wasn't progressive and liberal in this way of thinking? Episodes like this prove everyone wrong. Ocean. But brother, it's only three bars of latinum. And I'm not gonna let those three bars destroy this family. It's only three bars, just pay the three bars. Nation, for your son's financial future, please imprint the confession. Quark's argument does make sense in a Ferengi way though. You're a selfish female who never cared about this family, about father, or about- Oh my God, that's a little far. The females. Oh. Rom, is something wrong? Yeah, there is something wrong. Well, maybe. Just a little. All right, if it will make you feel better. No, but I, I don't want them off. Oh. 
I am so glad we're framing the shots like this. Ferengi tradition doesn't allow females to travel. Quark doesn't make the rules. He just lives by. Yeah, he does. You always were a good boy. I don't think Quark knows how lucky he is to have a brother as loyal as you. Yeah, he's super lucky. About pride. And knowing I'm just as capable of earning profit as any male. Okay, that makes sense. Your teeth. <gasps> My teeth? Why? You're looking a little dull. Why don't you sit here and I'll sharpen them for you. Sharpen his teeth? Is that her? <gasps> Is that her? Why don't you just beam it to your cargo hold? Oh. Well, I wish I could, but it's unstable biomatter. Oh, here we go. A Mark V. Oh, Mark V, I thought they uh, stopped making those things. 15 years ago. Yeah, they did. Oh, let me guess. Commander Sisko. Cassidy, Cassidy Yates. Wait, I like her already, guys. Let them date. How about coffee? Yes. Say tomorrow evening, 1800 yes. hours. Sounds good. Sounds perfect. There's nothing like sleeping in your old room. <laughs> That's so true, actually. Really? I didn't even know she was up yet. I mean, she's been busy. How much light has she made? You mean she earned more? A lot more. How much? So much that I haven't been able to track it all down. What the? She's been operating under dozens of different aliases, conducting transactions all over the Ferengi line. Dude, she's the perfect Ferengi. Even if I sold everything I have, I couldn't come close to paying back what she's earned. Really? I'm ruined. Do you think his pride is also a little hurt that a woman has been able to make more money than he has? Your situation might overreact and lose their temper, make a bad situation worse. <laughs> Not my brother. Not my brother. <laughs> I already have. Oh, you see? I told you. What is it? I'm going to kill her. What? Shabuki has a perfectly good explanation for what she's done, don't you, Mookie? Since when does a Ferengi have to make excuses for making pro- Yeah, exactly. But this female is a better Ferengi than you'll Oh my god. He understands. He's so blind with jealousy he can't even think- Oh my god. The fact that his mom is saying this. You're just like your father. <sighs> That's what I said earlier. Girls don't belong in business. Give me one reason why not. Because yeah. it's wrong. Why? A lot of things were good enough for your father. He was a lobeless failure. <laughs> Let's see what they have to say about your financial empire. Yeah, but won't that hurt you as well, Quark? Brother, wait! Out of my way, Rob. No, I'm not gonna let you hurt mother. She's no- Look at this shaky cam. Not better than you did. You went off as soon as you reached the age of ascension, but I stayed here for 10 more oh. years. You okay, Rob. Take him back! It's the truth! He went from one bad deal to the next. Okay, Rob. As you sold it into his pants! <laughs> okay, Rob. <laughs> Oh, brother fight. You'll get in trouble. I'll worry about that. Go on. What are you waiting for? Oh my god. Get outcasted. That is the steepest 40 flights of stairs I have ever climbed. <laughs> Name's Quark. I'm here to see Liquidator Brunt. Oh my god. You have to pay for everything. Now what do you want? I have a message from Mookie. There's nothing she could say that would interest me. She'll share it with you. Oh, that would be interesting. Her profits, 50-50. Oh, business deal. Let's try out that elevator. <laughs> but it's so expensive. I can afford it. For your trouble. Dude, he's like, I'm a rich man now, you know. I want to apologize for all the terrible things I said. I was angry, and I got carried away. I'm just two-sided cork over here. He's only apologizing because he's getting money. I just don't want to make sure that everything is divided fairly. Divided? 50-50, just like you said. I never said that. Oh my god, Rob's a liar. You've caught in the door on your way out. That's enough bickering. You're both acting like children. Okay, Rob. If Quark can uncover your hidden investments, eventually the FCA will too. Yeah. Neither of you is going to leave this room until you've settled things. Dude, Rob is so changed. That's easy for you to say. He doesn't live next door to you. 
You're too hard on him. Yeah, you are, Quark. I'm just being honest. Rom's a lot like his father. And you... Or like me, in business sense. Your father might have bought you your first copy of the Rules of Acquisition. But who helped you memorize them? All 285 rules <laughs> without a mistake. I remember the day that I did that as well. What a day. Eldar didn't know the first thing about profit. He knew everything about family. Aww. The way I love Rom. And the way I love you. This is nice, guys. What the heck? Oh, Moogie. I love you. Oh. I don't want her to imprint, though. That's the thing. Can I get you another Octogena? Uh, no, I'm fine. Is it not working, really, between them? Well, it's so far away, it takes two weeks for a subspace transmission to get here, and I'm expecting one tonight. I promised. Oh, that makes sense. Uh. He was doing something called sliding into second. Oh, he's playing baseball. That sounds like baseball. You know about baseball? It's my favorite sport. Oh my God. At least they have been for the last six months. I had no idea. He's gonna go visit Cestus III. I didn't know anyone else liked baseball except me and Jake. <laughs> <laughs> so does he watch like old reruns of baseball then from 200 years ago? Just comment. Uh, well, if you'd like, you're welcome to listen to it with- Dude, a baseball date. Of course. Do you think your brother could use a right-handed pitcher? <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> Wait, this might be good. They might be good together. I think Cisco's actually more in love with the brother, though. I can't lie. What are you saying about a lesson? Ah, the lesson is no one can outsmart the FCA. Yeah, no one can. <laughs> Goodbye. I sincerely hope I never see any of you again. <laughs> and I'm in no mood for your nagging. You're absolutely right. If you want to wear clothes, go ahead. Oh, progressive. Well, you know, you could call your mother every once in a while, maybe even visit. I will. I promise. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Take good care of your brother. Bye, Moogie. Oh, that was a sweet episode, guys. I didn't expect that. That was such a sweet episode. And I didn't expect a Ferengi episode either. That was really fun. And that was my reaction to Family Business, episode 23 of season 3 of Star Trek Deep Space Nine and the fourth to last episode of the season, which is super exciting, everyone. But yeah, this was an episode that was unexpected, but also really good. I should have expected actually family business, business being in the title and family. I should have expected it to be a, a Ferengi episode. And the more I watch Ferengi episodes, the more I like Ferengi episodes. And this one was A plot was Ferengi episode and B plot was Cisco uh, meeting the girl that Jake has set him up with in Explorers, which is so awesome. I'm so glad that conversation came back. Let's talk about the Ferengi stuff first and then we'll talk about the Cisco stuff. The Ferengi stuff was really nice to watch and it was really interesting to watch as well. I don't think we've ever been to the Ferengi homeworld and if we have I don't remember being to the Ferengi homeworld and I don't think we have. We've only heard about it and stuff and we've never seen women on the Ferengi homeworld as well. We've seen a female Ferengi once in the show and that was the part where Quark and her were doing business together but she was dressed up as a dude and then Quark found out that she was a woman and stuff like that you know and then but he like stood up for her a little bit stood up for her in front of Zeke you know, or Zek, I think his name is Zek, the Grand Nagus. And so that was really interesting. But, you know, we've heard the stories that female Ferengis have to be naked. You know, they're not allowed to earn profits. They're not allowed to speak to another person, to strangers and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Like, they're treated almost not really as actual Ferengi. You know what I mean? Like, they're not really treated as equals. Not really being an understatement. They're really not treated as equals. And so it was really interesting to go back and to see Quark's mother who was kind of stepping outside of the law and just trying to be a normal person you know what i mean trying to be a normal friend you know wear clothes speak to whoever she wants to speak earn profit because she has the lobes for profit and so i found that really interesting and i'm always reminded uh, there's a lot of talk and i know 
things may be a little different and the conversation in terms of what episodes are talking about has changed and stuff like that but a lot of the new star trek shows a lot of the i haven't seen them so i don't know but a lot of people are talking about how they hate how woke and i hate the word woke because i think people throw it around so much it has a meaning but i think a lot of people who use the word woke don't actually know what it means and so they just throw it around but a lot of people say that woke is what star trek has become and a lot of episodes in the newer star trek are, are too woke you know what I mean and they need to go back to the old times but I feel like they're forgetting about Star Trek and how woke woke Star Trek has always been Star Trek has always been a very progressive show it has always been a very liberal show you know what I mean it was very liberal viewpoints of the world and this episode in DS9 which came out in the 90s is proof of that you know what I mean like this episode is about kind of female empowerment obviously in our world today women have uh, can wear clothes and they can talk to strangers and stuff obviously there's more rights than a female Ferengi would have but that doesn't change the fact of what the episode is talking about and so I think people are kind of looking almost to fight and to just say stuff about things being woke in order to complain for complaining's sake with the new Star Trek when older Star Trek even TOS back in the 60s and stuff had episodes that were very progressive for the time or had characters who were very progressive for the time so I think it's really interesting when you watch episodes like that but I really like the relationship between Rom, Quark and the mother at first I thought Quark was going to be like the father because you know the father didn't like the mother and the father you know all that stuff I was like oh so Quark's like the father and Rom is like the mother but then when the mother was like yeah Quark you're like me and Rom is like your dad because your dad didn't have the lobes for business but he was a really great person and a really great father I was like oh that actually makes a lot of sense you know what I mean and so I really like the struggle that Quark had with the mom and it wasn't a hundred percent diluted like obviously he's still going to be mad if she's still doing business so she didn't tell him or anything but there is a better relationship between them now but I think the real hero of this episode was Rom. Rom was incredible in this episode his character arc so far like if you look at him now compared to the start of the season he is so different the way he stood up to his mother and to Quark at the end of this episode and he just sat them down he's like you guys have to talk about this like I'm not gonna let you guys tear the family apart and stuff like that was such a good speech from him like he fought Quark in this episode and stuff just I'm really proud of Rom. you know I'm really proud of Rom. <laughs> I really like him a lot. And then obviously the other part of this episode was Cisco meeting. I think her name was like y Yelena or something like that. I'm not, I forget what she was called. Actually, I'll be honest with you. So I'm going to call her the cargo ship captain. But I thought that was really nice. We didn't see a lot of it. It was only like maybe five to 12 minutes of the episode was on that little storyline there but she seemed like a really nice person like I immediately felt like attached to her like I immediately felt like this kindness from this character and this energy from this character which I really liked and then when they were having coffee together it was really cute I thought at first the date wasn't going well because it was kind of this awkward silence but it turns out she was just expecting some information and then it turns out Cisco may be more in love with her brother who plays baseball than her herself but I think this is going somewhere guys I think this is going somewhere I hope that she stays around I hope that, that we see maybe a relationship with her and Cisco blossom in this end of this season and going into season four and stuff I hope she doesn't just randomly leave in a random episode like she only appears once and then leaves like I hope she becomes a mainstay character because their chemistry together in the 12 minutes that they had in this episode was really really good and also Cisco has his goatee still which is kind of cool I quite like Cisco's goatee it's grown on me the more I think about it the more I'm like yeah he looks pretty sick with that goatee so hopefully he keeps it around for a little bit longer anyways let's get into the next episode now the last episode of the day episode 24 of season 3 Shakar I'm excited for this one I don't know what to expect hope you enjoy my reaction and let's get into it Got you this time, Chief. Oh, the dartboard, it's back! Oh my god. Don't apologize, that just makes it worse. <laughs> so true. Where's my man Bashir, by the way? Dax to Cisco. Go ahead. Benjamin, there's a priority message for you from the Bajoran Provisional Government. I think this is a Kira episode, guys. You'll have to find yourself another victim. I wonder if Morin's any good at darts. <laughs> Oh. Some prayers for Burial, it looks like. It's a lamp for the dead. I was just praying for Burial. What can I do for you? You know, we haven't really talked about that that much since his death. Kayla, my friend. How? 
Heart failure. He died in his sleep. Okay, at least a peaceful death. How soon will they appoint someone to replace him? They have already appointed someone. Is it going to be you, Kira? The new head of the provisional government. Or is it Wynn? Is Kai Wynn. No! 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 Ah, I just want to punch her in the face. Not Kira. I don't want to punch Kira in the face. I want to punch a Wynn in the face. She's getting her little grubby little ugly little hands all over the place. You know what I mean? Star Trek Deep Space no. That's it. I have nothing else to say. That's it. Major, there's something wrong. Yes. Oh my god, Wynn is in this episode. Well, I'm beginning to think you and I are the only ones who feel that way. No one is opposing her in next month. I would oppose her. There's a personal element to our feelings about her. I know that you still blame Wynn for Beryl's death. Yeah, she is partly to blame. This is about the future of Bajor. I can't shake the feel. She also blew up a school. Maybe, maybe I'm afraid that if she's given power, she's never gonna let it go. Maybe become a dictator, take full control of all Bajor. I know that, Major. But to the rest of Bajor, Wynne is the real hero. Yeah. With a race that she herself has so bitterly condemned and like fought this. against. I don't care what her I like that this treaty keeps coming back from time to time. The prices of giving people freedom of choice is that sometimes they make the wrong ones. They make the wrong choice. Exactly, Odo. Shalaka. Yes. Oh my god, she was already a little grumpy. Eminence. May I come? Just karate kick her out the door. Have you suffered a recent loss? Or are you still mourning the death of Minister Kayla? Oh my god. It's been three months since Boreal left us to walk with the prophets. Three months is not that long, Wynne. Boreal saw himself as simply carrying out the will of the prophets. To him, achieving peace with Cardassia was its own reward. Oh my god, shut up. But as you know, the Cardassians poisoned much of our farmlands before they left. And okay, yeah, they did. Reclamators, which can detoxify the soil and make it fertile again. Oh, that's it's actually very so good. Interesting. But what does that have to do with Kira? A group of farmers who were allowed to use the Reclamators in another province are now refusing to return them. Interesting. And they're led by a man with whom you're acquainted. His name is Shakar. Oh, Shakar's the name. He's the leader of your resistance cell during the occupation. Oh, she's gonna get Kira to go. Convince him to return the equipment he's stolen. Interesting. Not for me, child. For Bejor. She has a way with words, you know, Wind. By stealing the reclamators, he's acting in his own self-interest at the expense of the rest of us. Yeah, but what if there's another reason for stealing them? Vedic Baral used to tell me that you could be quite persuasive when you put your mind to it, child. I hope he wasn't mistaken. Walk with the prophets. Walk with the prophets. Yeah, Wade has such a way with words. A lot of the time she speaks the truth, but she warps it in just the right way to get people to listen to her. Very dry and rocky. That is not good growing conditions. You cut your hair. Oh, that's Shakar. I was thinking the same thing. About you. <laughs> Aww. Pharrell and Lufusa, you still see them? Of course. Both have farms less than 10 kilometers from here. Oh, cool. You can ask her yourself. They'll be here in a couple of hours. You can hardly wait to see the look on their faces when they walk through that door and see you standing. It's an old rebellion reunion. I'm here on business. I know why you're here, Nerys. I need time to think about it, alright? Think about it. I feel like he's not gonna give it to... If he already hasn't... Sorry, I saw Morn, Frank Morn, and I just had to stop talking. But he's not gonna give it back, I don't think. Oh my god. Oh, Brian's so good. His duties on board the station. <laughs> now, everyone, make way. <laughs> He's like the celebrity of the bar. Tomorrow, Chief, for your 
47 I remember when Quark was complaining about the dartboard because it wasn't going to make him profit. Golden shoulder. This streak will be over. And you'll never know just how far it might have taken you. Business-wise. You're offering 10 to 1 to anyone betting against me tomorrow? That's right. I'd make it 15 if I were you. Oh my god. I thought he was going to ask for some of the profits. On your tracks the next day, you'd been walking in circles. I was throwing the Cardassians off my track. <laughs> Why haven't you... And my arm... Got it in a new arm? It'll have full range of motion and... And feel just like your own. But it won't be your own. And uh, at an exchange, I... You sacrificed the arm. Boop is all. <laughs> it's only cost me an arm. So he keeps it as a reminder? I felt the, the profits were generous. So. Yeah, it'd be disrespecting them. To convince us to return the reclamators to the government. And you said no. He's thinking about it. We need the reclamators, and that's the end of it. Now! Who wants to Wally Pie? Kira can't go without a yes, though, I don't think. This is like the same situation or a very similar situation to when she was sent to that moon that was about to be mined or something and had to make that old guy leave his house. Kind of a similar situation in a way. We finally got him two months ago. And we were told they were ours for at least a year. Really? So it keeps them for a year. <sighs> then Minister Calum died. Oh, and now Wynn is there. I don't know, but if you and the Kai would sit down and talk together, maybe you can reach some kind of- Dude, this guy and the Kai, it's gonna end in a fist fight. It might not, but it's a place to start. All right, for you. I like this guy. He actually seems fairly rational. You know what I mean? Yeah. Especially me. Oh, was there maybe a little bit of romance beforehand? We talked. And have you convinced him to return the soil reclamators? Not exactly. Resolve the situation so that both Rakantha and Decor can benefit. Hmm, okay, Kira. That you were there on the direct authority of the First Minister. Do you think they care? Shakar sounds like a prideful and arrogant man. What? No. I'm sure if you talk to him, you'll be able to work out a compromise. It would seem that I have little choice. Dude, I just want to slap Win out that window. And then you can return to Deep Space Nine. But I can still serve as intermediary between- No, she's done with you. You've done enough already. And please give my best regards to Commander Sisko. You've done enough already. Oh my god, not even looking- Oh my god. Are you Shakar? Yes. You're under arrest. Oh, come on. Our orders came directly from the office of the First Minister. She lied to me. Of course she did. Make one thing clear. Bam. Oh. Yes. Oh, there is. Let's go. It's a tense situation. You acted on instinct. They'll understand that, but they won't understand you coming with me. That's true. Kai win for the last time. She wants a fight. I'll give her one. Dude, so fair. I feel like I've been betrayed so much by Kai win at this point that every time I see her face, I want to punch it. Every time I think about her face, I want to punch my thoughts. I'm not so sure about that. Some of them were in the resistance too. They might not give up so easily. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> I forgot about this subplot. I think he knows that, Julian. Don't worry, coach. His luck is out. I won't let you down. His luck is out. Extra stout, just the way you like it. You're too cocky. You're too cocky. Oh! oh what, is, oh. what did I do? I, I just handed him a drink. It's all right. Oh my days. You've got a rotator cuff tear and severe degenerative damage. Oh, you better get into the infirmary. <laughs> reaching for a drink. Ah! Oh, I just need surgery. Throw, throw with your other hand. All I did was hand him a drink. Cork man, it's all your fault. <laughs> what the heck? How did he? How did he like? Oh, break his shoulder. <laughs> you mean declaring martial law? and suspending local government in the hill provinces? Oh my god. I'm aware that you kept such close watch on the Bajoran political situation. She's going so extremist. Then I advise withdrawing your troops from Dakur. I'm more than willing to do that, on one condition. That they give up the farming things. Provide a Federation security force to take their place. What the heck? I'm sorry. But Federation law prevents me from interfering in Bajoran internal affairs. Yeah, there we go, punk. You're refusing my request for aid. Yeah, I am. I suppose I am. <laughs> okay, Cisco. 
we'll withdraw our application for membership. Oh my god, Kai Wid. By using the militia against your own people, you're risking civil war over a couple of soil reclamators. Yeah. Soil reclamators. This is about the future of our society. What is she going on about? They want to see if I'm worthy of the role they've given me as first minister and Kai. And she's actually insane. You're closing. 75 meters. Come on, Kira. I've almost got it. What is that? Meters, that way. Oh, it like, Let's go. it like, you know, you know what I'm trying to say. It does that. Serpent's Ridge is pretty rugged territory. I don't think we have much choice. Yes, we do. Okay, let's go to Serpent's Ridge. Sometimes it was our nose that got bloodied. We were willing to take the chance. You willing to die for these farming rec reclamators? Kira's on point. Column of two's behind her. Lupaze, you take up the rear. There is no way out of it. I'm actually really nervous that, that these people are standing and fighting. Like, I wonder if a lot of them are gonna die. Oh, well, they must know they're walking into a trap though, right? You have to get him with the first volley. You take the lieutenant on the right. You're actually gonna kill these people. Kira, you're gonna go through with this? No, he's not gonna shoot. Something's gonna happen. I can't. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's our own people. Kira Norris. We've met. Yeah, you have. If I've walked into an ambush, I should have stayed up on the ridge line. Never come down into the valley. This guy is good. The Pollock Five raid. You know about that. <laughs> First off, you guys just be friends. I'm gonna take my people and walk out of here. I wanna take them home. Oh my god! Wait. Stop! Stop! Lord, he said don't Lord, fire! Lord, he said don't fire. Who shot that? You're out. You're out. Sir, I saw someone. Oh my god. Take this man's weapon and get him off the perimeter. Yeah, get him out of here. Today I'm talking about tomorrow, and the next day and the next I am talking about the beginning of a civil war. Yeah. I didn't fight the Cardassians for 25 years just so I could start shooting other Bajorans. Neither did I. I like this. I like this guy. I like this guy a lot. I'm here to enter the election. As no a way. Candidate for the office of first minister. No way. Lose. I've consulted with the other army commands, and he has their full support. Ha <laughs> ha! When you're gonna lose some power, bub? A spiritual leader of Bajor, but your days in this office are numbered. Oh my God! This is so satisfying, guys. Oh, that was so satisfying, but this is not the end of Wynn. She's gonna come out harder than ever. How does it feel? <sighs> Good so far. Gonna lose the magic touch though. But it felt good while it lasted. Well, look on the bright side. Oh, is Bashir gonna be in the zone? Quark, I need a whole suite. Bashir's in the zone now. Welcome to the zone. Can I interest you in? <laughs> interesting way to end the episode. That was a very interesting episode though. Not a lot of politics in that episode, but I quite enjoyed it. And that was my reaction to Shakar, episode 24 of season 3 of Star Trek Deep Space Nine and the last episode of the penultimate video before the season finale. The season finale is next week and I cannot be more excited. But I'm getting ahead of myself. That's for me to talk about next week. Let's talk about Shakar. This was a really fun episode. It was a Kira episode. It was a Bajoran episode and Wynn was in this episode, but she got her comeuppance. Um, she didn't get her comeuppance because she's still around and she's still going to be stupid and horrible and I want to slap her in the face every time I see her and stuff like that. She's gonna, she's still going to be around and lingering and stuff in the shadows like a little weirdo, if you know. But it was so awesome to see Kira kind of outwit, and, and Shakar, I guess, Kira and Shakar outwit win for just this once because usually she always has the upper hand and usually she comes out more or less on top than the person that she's up against you know what i mean but in this episode she didn't get it she was going so extremist mode kind of almost starting a civil war over these like three farming reclamators i don't know if it was three but you know a very small amount of farming equipment and she was going so crazy i don't know if it was just because she had so much power she was being like almost corrupted by this power or if she's always just been this crazy i mean she has kind of always been this crazy 
she blew up a freaking school you know what i mean so maybe i maybe it's just she has so much power so she's like yes now i can just start a civil war i'm not quite sure why she wanted to start the civil war though like i understand that she was trying to capture these people because as she said in this episode if she doesn't capture these people if people can evade the law then they're gonna fall into anarchy and stuff like that i understand like why she was trying to capture them and stuff but i don't understand if either she understood how far this was going or if she just didn't care how far this was going or if she actually wanted a civil war to break out and stuff i'm not quite sure which direction she wanted to go because i can't really see why a civil war would help bajor in any way you know what i mean and then when she was like talking to cisco and cisco's like yeah you need to kind of stop and she's like okay we're pulling out of the federation then i was like are you mad are you insane like how much of an overreaction are you going through so i was so happy to see kira and shakar walk into the office with the other general who i really liked by the way and for them to just be like yeah shakar he's running for first officer for first office whatever i forget what the name of it is but for head office of government basically you know what i mean he's running everyone supports him you're out of here kai win if you even run then this whole scenario is being publicized and i was like yes Yes, Kira. Yes, Shakar. You know what I mean? Haha. <laughs> it was super, super satisfying. I also really loved the relationship between Kira and Shakar. I thought that was a really nice thing. I, I thought there might have been something romantic with them at one point, but I'm not quite sure if there is. Um, he, because Shakar was like, uh, like everyone missed you and stuff, but he's like, I, especially me. You know what I mean? Like I missed you the most, and so I was like, huh. Is there like a little romantic interest with Shakar and Kira? And I don't think there is. Not from what I gauged from this episode. It seemed like they were just more friends and just more on the same side. But I really liked just their camaraderie, how they were talking about old times and stuff. The way that they worked together in the field, the way that they couldn't kill Bajorans. And then they were working with that other general to stop a civil war from happening right there. That guy who fired that first shot, if he had killed someone, the civil war would have started right there. He, he's so lucky that he didn't kill someone, that he didn't shoot someone, that he has bad aim, stormtrooper aim. Like what a horrible person. I hope he never serves military life again. I'm sorry. I'm hating on this guy. I'm hating on this guy, Jerry, for no reason. I've named him Jerry now. The subplot for this episode was also very, very fun. It was just O'Brien being good at darts, you know, and I mean, I don't mind it. If we have O'Brien and my man Bashir and Quark and Frank Moore just in a bar together playing darts, then it's a good time. You know what I mean? And I had a good time. It's kind of funny that O'Brien just like destroyed his shoulder reaching backwards for a drink. But I guess sometimes that happens in life and it sucks that he's out of the zone, but he'll get back in the zone one day. They play darts a lot. They went from, I love how in this show, they went from like flipping space tennis or whatever you call racquetball to darts and so i wonder if next season they're going to have another game that they play together i think that would be really fun they can play like i don't know pickleball or something together <laughs> i think that would be really fun anyways i think that's going to be the end of my reaction thank you so much for watching and thank you so much to these wonderful beautiful amazing people right here for supporting me and supporting my channel it really does mean a lot next week remember is the season finale of season three we have two episodes left episode 25 facets in episode 26 the adversary which is going to be super awesome to watch i'm so excited and after the adversary premiere then we are going to be doing a live stream so make sure to stick around after the premiere if you can check out the premiere for a live stream where we're going to be ranking all the episodes of deep space nine season three going over them talking about them what we loved about season three and what we are hoping to for for season four as well and if you're watching this on youtube you can check out season four right now on patreon well i'll have a whole Whole bunch of episodes out of season four you know the premiere of season four and probably like up to episode four or five of season four will be on patreon right now for your viewing pleasure if you'd like to check that out anyways thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time for my next star trek deep space nine reaction